Greetings, geeks. Welcome to episode 607 of Geeks in Space. I'm Rob Commander Takamol. And joining me today on this very lovely Tuesday are three of the greatest geeks that you're ever going to meet. We got Rob Roseboom. Are we really going to talk like this? Yeah, we're going to pick it up. <laughs> Chris Devona. Sharon Carter's never going to happen. <laughs> and the extra special presence of Cliff Lampy. Hey, Cliff. Hey, Good to be here, EC. School's out for summer. School's out for summer. All right. So I think Cliff entirely joined this call today because he wants to talk <laughs> about the finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So let's just like get that out of the way. Let, right let's, up front. yeah, let's go let's ahead, Cliff. <laughs> I mean, it's not All like right. I'm saying it's go ahead, Cliff. Tell us your wrong opinion. <laughs> yes, about Captain Underpants and the Winter Soldier. When I was a small child, I swore to myself I would watch every comic book thing ever to be published. I did not know that they would suddenly have this like plethora of comic book shows. So I have seen terrible comic book television. I mean, I watched all of the Inhumans. So right? did I. <laughs> television. Mm -hmm. And so by the standards of a lot of comic TV, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was good. And I agree with all the weaknesses that people have pointed out, but I still think there is a great story at the heart of that. And it's a great kind of bridging story to kind of phase four of what Marvel's trying to do. I agree. I, 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 I guess I agree with your premise other than to say, if people are reading like food reviews, you're generally interested in good food. To say that this was the <laughs> best, best prison food I've ever had doesn't mean that it's good food. See, I wouldn't say it's prison food. I'd say it's like Olive Garden food, right? I'm sorry, like, what vintage is this Bruno? Is this uh, three to six years? Is this yeah. four to life? Now, I, I will, I will give you, food. if you take the the breadth of, of comic book cinema, the Winter Soldier probably ends up on the top half of that. I just think they had a couple of really good stories that could have dialed in on and explored, and instead they tried to do too much yeah. and muddled everything up and gave you half-ass storylines, like four half-ass storylines and a few that you don't care about. Yeah. Yeah, they had pursued the Isaiah Bradley story. And they really, phoned it in, didn't they? Really leaned into that. Like, and that comic book is so watershed overall. Like, the original book yeah. that story comes out of is a fantastic book. It could have made a fantastic storyline, but... I mean, I, yeah, I, I we've talked about this. A I would have liked before. to have seen. Yeah, uh, we've talked about this a little bit before, and uh, the word is the rumor, and maybe that's just internet rationalization. But the word is is that the flag smashers were combating a virus, which was theoretically maybe uh, put out by the GRC. Uh, so the, basically, there, and there was a vaccine involved, and it was too close, so they stripped it out. So I think what happened is Carly's entire story becomes muddled and we don't understand really her motivation and therefore when sam comes in for his dramatic finale since we didn't care about carly in a meaningful way it doesn't like that like it neutered the the power of what he was trying to do I, it was still effective uh but i just felt like i think that uh, i think you're you're spot on because i think uh i think the flag smashers plotline didn't work uh and i yeah. think the uh uh, the Sharon Carter thing didn't work. She's probably a scroll anyway, so nobody's really taking it seriously. Uh, and uh, so what you end up with is uh, the Isaiah Bradley plotline, which was cool. Uh, you end up with uh, uh, the, ca the, the Captain America plotline was cool. Like watching, watching him yeah. develop and grow, that was cool. Uh, and uh, I thought the Bucky plotline was cool. Uh, but when you have wait, only- Wait, 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 wait. God, you know, I, I, I like you, Rob, but come on. The Bucky plotline was terrible. It was small. Yeah, him trying to kiss ass of the father of the person whose whose son he killed. No, see, it could have been. I, cool, I mean, right? I disagree. No, I think it was effective. I, I'm sorry. There's no world where that guy is. Then, oh, thank you so much for telling me how you murdered my fucking kid. I don't think that's you what know? he did. Like, I think he was the, weeping the in a bar. Shit is I think this. you're you're ignoring the text. You uh, were literally shown. This was you not were a literally good show. Shown. I, you're, I'm, you're watching a show that wasn't on the screen. No, you're ignoring you're a show. You're it. ignoring screens that were shown to you. Uh, they literally yeah. showed the resolution of that sequence, and it was yeah, sad. And it was, it was, it was unbelievably 
portrayed. So the you problem guys, is you guys the loved show. The comics, the comics were good, and you, you saw the comics. What was on screen was dog shit, man. The show was Falcon it was and the Winter Soldier. Crap. It the was show was boring. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and the Winter Soldier <sighs> was given uh, a character arc that sure. was one of the what was given equal screen time to the bottom, the lesser three or four plot lines. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think that it resolved as well as we would have liked, but it was I, as a lightweight plot, it worked. It, my my problem with it is tonally the idea that he's walking around with a list of of you know people he has to write is and going to therapy about it is is a different sort of tone than the rest of the show. It's jokey. It's jokey, and if you're gonna if you're going to mix that with the United States government, you know, <laughs> experimenting on the black Captain America they made, throwing him in jail and draining him of his body fluids, yeah. <laughs> that's two different tones, man, that don't mix. You know, it's funny. Like, and you, you can baby hook those two together, but they didn't. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they did it. I mean, I agree. There's so many lost opportunities here. Really, the, the the emotional core of this movie should have been Sam's therapy background, right? Like mm -hmm. the real thing that tied together yeah, all right? these things was the fact that Sam was empathetic and cared about other people, right? That's that's the redemptive arc for the Winter Soldier. That's when he was connecting to Carly. Like they had little bits and pieces of that throughout, where Sam wasn't just being kind of a, a bro, but he was actually like using that skill set of his. Mm -hmm. That could have been. That was great that i mean and, 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 yeah and ahead. if they would have, if they would have focused on that stuff throughout the show instead of the nonsense his speech at the end would make more sense too that's yeah. that, that's like, the problem <laughs> yeah they would have tied it all together if the whole thing had been heartfelt and serious from the beginning and you know made you question about who really are the good guys uh that that speech of the end would have made sense instead we got this yeah yeah and so that's, i think there's only one solution we also, edit the movie i, I want to point yeah. out something rob maldo when you said that you can only see this as someone wearing underpants on their heads yeah you ruined it for yeah me, right? does it not look like he's just <laughs> wearing tidy whiteies i thought it was kind of cool but then you said that, and all I see is spandex underpants. Yeah, he's wearing underwear thank on you. his head. So thank you for ruining the one thing yep. that was kind of moderately neat. It needs <laughs> a know. couple more stripes or a different texture or something. Every time I'm wearing, I feel like I'm a little kid, you know, wearing underpants on my head and being stupid, you know, and I'm a nine-year-old or something. I don't know. I Okay, well, I we're like just going to let that one go. <laughs> I, like also, the, I like the uniform. I, also, I did too if, until... If the Wakandans made his new wings... I don't know why he can't shoot blades out like Archangel. I mean, that's in the same universe. Yeah. Certainly, the Wakandans are aware of Angel at this point, right? They, I mean, I, I get the cool Wakandans on, this on, a, on a rush job, but you're right. Like, there could have been some cooler stuff here. Like, yeah. I loved how I loved how he the, he used the wings as a shield, but he did it both in the beginning and the first episode. He mm -hmm. did it uh, against bullets, and in the finale, he did it against what it was a helicopter or something that falls on him when he's on a bridge, or he flips yeah. a car on him. Like it, they, that's cool. They they uh, they made those wings really sweet. I I liked how they did all that. I just wish, yeah. yeah. Magnum says it looks more like a jock strap than underpants. He's right. It looks like he's wearing a jock strap uh, around the back of his head, and uh, that's a bummer. Well, uh, Magnum's not a PI for no reason. That's true. You know, he sees that's things. Good insight. Yeah, maybe maybe it's Magnum PI like it's a Raspberry Pi. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. Uh, all right. Uh, holy crap! Oh uh, uh, wait, we're not done. Oh, we're okay. not done. Okay, oh. first of all, Elaine is Madam Hydra. The whole USA agent thing that was like tacked on at the end with like bubble gum and sweat. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. That was terrible. That was, uh, that's it was that's all how these shows just work. Bad. I. It wasn't even fan service. You know, it was just. It was just lame. It They're was just, just like they threw a bunch of stuff in a blender and said, eh, you know, until the Black Widow movie comes out, this is as good as you're going to get. Suck it up. You know? Well, I think Loki comes out before that, doesn't it? Or I forget. Yeah, that's true. Know. I hope it's better than that. Loki comes out uh, like what, first week of June. Yeah, we'll have like a week break and then they start the next thing. I mean, I think that's part of the problem, though, was that tacking on like this series was intended to carry too much weight, mm -hmm. right? Like bridging between multiple new storylines. That's why so many things kept getting tacked on, trying to tell the story of the, these traditional. I mean, it's just it was trying to do too much. Yeah. And I think that uh, 
Ambalu is right. This, this man needs a helmet for sure. You know, or at least like a I hat. Mean, a a pop up wings helmet isn't a good enough thing. I mean, he's gonna have his skull pe- peeled off him. Cap wore that stupid thing in Avengers with the A on his forehead that made him look yeah. like the dumbest man walking. <laughs> they could at least done better than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they should have. Yeah. They should have given him a helmet that looked actually like a falcon, right? Huh? Yeah. Whoa. That would be sweet. I don't know. I like you that they a... that they made the flag on his chest look like wings. I mean, it's a it's a good suit. Imagine how cool it would be though if he got to tear apart his opponents with a cybernetic beak. You know, for justice. <laughs> yeah. That'll work. That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> what was the... Oh, let me find it. Well, uh... yeah, here, here's here's what they should have gone with. Let me uh, let me share this image. No, there you go. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Just like that. Yep. Here we go. Careful, you're stepping on holy ground for Cliff here. Oh, oh my god, that guy I enjoyed was so Rogers. cool. He was, oh, and his ship, there's... his ship was the coolest ship in that show. Oh. The, set, the set design, exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually, speaking of set design, that was another thing. If you look at, uh, uh, throughout, so I rewatched the, the whole Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and uh, all of the courtroom scenes are set in the same room, and then there's like, when uh, when Val, don't say her name, re-meets up with uh, and be- and Kristen's U.S. agent, it's in the same room. And, like, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that's in the same room that doesn't feel like it should have been in the same room. And it just either screams of filmed under COVID guidelines or was, you know, tacked on in reshoots or, like, or felt cheap. Uh, yeah, I've seen memes related to that, right? Like, you know, just that it looked like cosplay uh in a lot of cases like the set design was terrible let's go have a fight in another warehouse sure do like fighting in warehouses the stakes are low and there's a roof so it's easier to render (laughs) uh yeah i mean the the this sequence uh but then also his like testimonial sequence and then there's there's like there's like three different scenes that i think were filmed in the same room over the course of the episodes it's also i know it happens in the comic book but it's adorable to me that he gets called in front of Congress. Yeah. <laughs> they know he's taken the super soldier serum and that he's murdered someone. Right. And they're just like, you lose all your rank. You go home now. <laughs> you know, we're not putting you in some black ops facility for the rest of your life while we try to synthesize more super soldier serum from your blood. <laughs> or, you know, or but mind if you were control a black you. Man, if you were just, a black man. I'm yeah, really unclear mean, on the powers that a super soldier possesses in the MCU as well, because Carly also, died from everyone, a couple of bullets. Originally, it, no one does. Yeah, originally it was supposed to be like peak maximum performance plus ten percent. Ten percent. Like you take the world's strongest man, and Captain America was just a little bit stronger than the world's strongest man. He could pick up. Like a ton, you know, he's a little bit faster than Usain Bolt, you know, he's just like, just a little bit better than the best anyone could be normally. Uh, But then that changes, you know, because you see things then where he's, you know, holding the helicopter from from doing something somehow, you know, because... Yeah, I mean that's that's the arms race of powers in these right, things, right. right? When you have a character like Thor, then suddenly exactly. Captain America would be Hawkeye if they did it boost right. him a little bit, <laughs> right. right? And different serums, different super soldier serums have different effects, right? Like the serum that made the sure. abomination is going to be different than the ones that made the flag smashers and stuff. Because it seems like the or flag the, smashers the all skull. were much weaker than yeah, the, to compare to the Red Skull. Like that was uh... yeah, they were like diet. Super soldiers. Diet super yeah. soldiers. All right. They're the RC Cola of uh, super yeah. soldiers. The OK soldiers. <laughs> the, the better than me soldiers. The super they're OK like, soldiers. Uh, they're like Sergeant America, not yeah. really <laughs> Captain, you know. So. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. Do you guys want to go through the actual news events? Because there's like a thousand in the last week. Sure. Let's, sure. let's, let's, let's go fast unless we have things that yeah, uh, people want to talk about. Discord so, is not being bought by Microsoft now. And they said they're going to IPO. No one knows how or why, but okay. 
Yeah. Good on I mean, him. Nitro can't pay for that much stuff. But That's whatever. true. But I like uh, I like uh, Discord staying independent as long as possible. But you know I, I me just really and... like Discord, you know? I, I really like it. You know me and power consol- consolidation. I generally am wary of it in all forms. You're super into it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the, so... the Discord thing, like, we there's a lot of discussion about this in higher ed like we've been using slack especially during the pandemic to try to create communities but mm. slack is terrible for that yeah, in a lot garbage. of ways so <laughs> i'm moving to discord in the for fall sure. um we'll see how it goes yeah and that, i think that that's i would i would pay to let my children use discord instead of what they use in their school uh their zooming and their their uh meets and all that it's just not as good as discord Hey, we didn't talk about. I don't think you posted about Dan Kaminsky dying. So. Uh, I, I oh, wanted to let I wanted to let you uh, take that if you wanted because you knew the dude. Oh, okay. Well, let's let's keep going then. You know, we'll get to. Uh, well, know. okay. We have, like I uh, said, we have to get through a lot of stuff. We have a whole so week. Mars helicopter. We have a whole week out. Uh, we they got three flights. That's only number two, and yeah. there's been a third now. That's flying all over the place. Like, yeah, they got up. Like just don't care. Supposed to fly. Yep. Uh, all right. So the signal CEO, uh, that's a so weird much story. <laughs> Such a fun story, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, that'll be that'll be an interesting one to see uh, what yeah, goes. So if you haven't read it, go re- read it. Basically, Moxie Marlin Spike, uh, a, uh, a a compromise tool, fell off the back of a van when he was walking by, and uh, he basically hacked the hacking tool and. Signal distributed to its things a file that, if scanned by the hacking tool, compromises the hacking tool's results. <laughs> and he said, "Maybe we included a file for aesthetic reasons." It's it's very, it's very cute. Honestly, it's very fun. It's a terrific article to read. So, uh, okay, so the dragon went up with another uh, another crew True. thing. Yeah. So now now we don't have to care about that anymore. It's happened twice. Now it's normal. Uh, yeah. Uh, you Space scrolled right past the Minnesota Linux uh, scandal. Uh, uh, I feel like both Cliff I and did? Chris would have strong oh, yeah, feelings on the subject. Well, so I have to tell you, I, I need to not talk about this one. Fair I'm supposed enough. to talk to the folks there sometime this week um, because a certain uh, professor friend of mine told them that I had been looking into it from the Google yeah. side of things. <laughs> Why like, would a professor friend of you do that? That seems like yeah, a real that's dick a really move. Good question. <laughs> No, it wasn't. A, I don't think so. I mean, because I, I legitimately, I, mean, I was worried that Google, because you know, Google funds a ton of research across the academy and worldwide. So I was like, oh, we should find out if we funded some of this work, <laughs> you know, without realizing it. Right. So, uh, so I think that's completely reasonable. But yeah, no, I'm going to talk to them and say, hey, just do what the Carl team said to do and you'll be fine. You know, but Cliff, I, I don't know. What, what's your, what's your thinking? Or do you not I, want to talk about it? No, I, I, yeah, yeah, and we do. <laughs> Between Chris and I, we do have a lot of kind of like weird interconnections into this whole thing because I've got um, strong collaborators at Minnesota too. Um, you know, I, I think this is a great case where an individual researcher just didn't inform themselves about best practices yeah. for doing community research, right? Like, like you need when you're doing research on an entire community like that, you need some buy-in from the community, right? And there's been a huge amount of work done on this in the past couple of years about the best way to do this. And you know, security researchers in general tend to be a little black hat about this kind of thing, right? Like they yeah. they tend to be kind of cowboys. Of the, well, that's the, the nature. That's in many ways the nature of what they're doing. If they disclose what they're doing, then you know that that yeah. invalidates their test. It's it's different than a lot of uh, other social studying or social research. But yeah. also, you have the actual potential of killing someone by inserting a bug into something that's used in a life-critical situation. Yeah, and in this case, at, at the very least, you get a couple people's buy-in, right? Like people who are going to, like the people right at the top who you can trust. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the way security research is usually done. Usually you loop in the chief security officer and the CEO Right, of right. an organization, and it shouldn't be any different for an online community of people. So, um, I mean, my hope is is that Minnesota, like they they released an open letter a couple of days ago around this that I don't know that was that helpful. Um, my hope is is that like what I would love for them to do is just show what the research process is like because one of the things I've seen kind of in the comments around this is like 
it's not very apparent how research gets done at the university in a lot, for a lot of folks. <laughs> yeah. And I think like a really strong, like, look, this is exactly how this whole process happened and here's where things went wrong could go a long ways, but. I mean, they needed just a solid postmortem and, and a slight change of behavior. And also, I, you know, the thing I, I emailed uh, uh, Lauren about, I was like, you know, the real question is, is if this is a tenured professor, you have a much bigger problem on your hands than if they're not tenure track. And I mean, there, there's a lot of really thorny problems inside the university that nobody outside the university gives any crap about. All they really want to hear is that the university is going to do better. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. And within and, the university, and systemically, is. they're going to be a little, little smarter about how they do this. I mean, I hate to say it, the likelihood of a University of Minnesota uh, computer scientist becoming a kernel committer while at the university is very low. I don't think there's a single U of MN kernel developer is there mm. i mean yeah anyway so so i mean the it's a reputational hit but it's not an actual productivity hit uh to not be allowed to take part in the kernel so they should just say you know what let's take a look at our processes fix them up publish a postmortem, and move on right but yeah i think and the interesting so thing the inside up. politics too is like if if this department shuts down this researcher then there's going to be an additional problem they get with like freedom of uh, information and kind of like the the there's this whole like academic freedom thing that professors are promised right we can yeah. pursue whatever topics we want to yeah and they'd be seen as shutting that down yeah but at the same time there are limits you know yeah, i mean for, if you if you walked in and they found out that you were doing uh, research in becoming QAnon and yeah. becoming q they'd probably say well you probably went a little too far there professor lampy yes you know? i mean it's there's many other letters of my... the alphabet that you should be before you're q yeah they did turn down my like do different babies taste different when you cook them kind of research so did you run that through the irb or did you decide that there was no human impact there's uh, yeah i did a post hoc <laughs> <laughs> yeah the problem is that nobody wanted to eat the snacks you brought to the proposal meeting yeah. <laughs> you probably you probably could have gotten that to go in the 50s but, you know i think yeah. that we should not honestly curtail teenage. this discussion i don't want to hurt cliff's career by even <laughs> making okay. jokes adjacent to this kind of all right thing. so we had a couple of fun ones uh we talked last time we were on the phone about uh, uh the tesla uh and yeah, the guy tesla that crash. died uh uh mm -hmm. in the uh undriven or the un the, the tesla with nobody in the driver's seat a uh, consumer reports got a car to turn on the auto drive with nobody wow. in the seat so yep that's totally a thing you can do now uh that'll be fine uh the John Wick has has a spin-off series coming. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, and I was just going to say that reminds me of Nobody because uh, they seem to have a lot of DNA in common. But I'm, the, I was hoping to watch Nobody tonight. And I know Rob has seen it. Wait, uh, oh, uh, Nobody? Looks like we might have lost a Rob. Did we lose Rob? Uh, no, I'm still here. What, what, what do you want me to say? Oh, I just yes, you had, I saw you had seen nobody. Chris saw it too. I wasn't sure. I haven't seen it yet. I just uh, I... you told me not to talk about it because you hadn't seen it. Oh, Let's don't move on. Don't spoil me is what I said. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's not talk about that, but let's talk about uh, the Russian Hobbit, which is the one above you, Chris. Uh, There's a Russian Hobbit. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah, this is amazing. Uh, and we like you just press play and like fast forward into anywhere you want in the middle. Uh, you know, and it's oh, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. watched. I watched the Russian version of Avengers when that came out. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yep. 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 <laughs> I even set my background today uh, uh, in celebration <laughs> of this of, of this thing. It was uh, basically a low budget ninety made in like nineteen ninety in Russia, uh, presumably with no licensing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think Tolkien agreed to this for some reason? <laughs> I don't know. It's probably still better than the other Hobbit, the trilogy. Uh, you know, it's not, but <laughs> it's not good. I, that's to be fair. I only watched like ten minutes of it. I can't really. Uh, I, so, and I have seen the whole Hobbit trilogy and the Tolkien edit of the Hobbit trilogy. Uh, and the three-hour Lindsay Ellis, de like debrief oh, yeah. on how and that, that all happened. Good. That's a that's a great video. Uh, so. Uh, 
uh, in Tumblr Ridge, British Columbia, uh, they lost internet access because a beaver chewed through their fiber. Uh, and there's a stock photo <laughs> of a beaver. Uh, and there's a photo of a dam nearby, and it's got like all the the like it's got stuff nearby uh, from like that like they got the warning uh, plastic and stuff in their dam. <laughs> so that that just made me laugh. <laughs> Stupid mother nature. I knew beavers would get their revenge of, revenge eventually. Right. That's an angry looking beaver. Well, dude, he doesn't want his photo taken. Someone almost committed suicide so that you could, so that they could make ads out of you. You'd be pretty pissed too. All right, that's true. Beavers I mean, angry. but yeah, I mean, this is an angry beaver. But yeah, like check out the dam. There's like a fiber sheathing in, like in the dam. <laughs> like, oh oh my. Uh, so I like that. Uh, the census results came in, uh, and uh, uh, bad news uh, for Michigan. We're not going to be like a big deal swing state next time around. It looks like. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, Were you a big deal swing state before? my votes for oh, yeah. which representative we yeah. can lose. I'd be yeah, fine. How's, most how's of it them. work? Do they so they reapportion right the state right into many curly Q shaped. Districts and... well, actually not in Michigan because uh, Michigan passed a um, constitutional ballot amendment that we have a nonpartisan redistricting commission. So we've ended gerrymandering in Michigan, basically, um, through a constitutional kind of drive. And so now there's they're in the process of setting up that commission, setting up lines for how different districts will be drawn. So like wow. we're gonna our next election, they should have totally redrawn maps. Yeah. Very few curly cues. I've never understood why this is particularly hard. It seems like, you know, when you're a little kid uh, and, uh, you know, like you have a cookie and you, you want to share it with your brother, uh, you, oh. one kid breaks the cookie in half and then the other picks. It you seems like, choose. Oh. It seems like uh, you could do the same thing with, uh, with districts. Yeah. Like, okay, one side draws a district. Now the other side draws a district. Yeah. Now the other side draws a yeah. district. <laughs> Your your brother interactions were different than mine and Cliffs. <laughs> they continue yeah. to be. There's, there's, first of all, there's no sharing. If the cookie breaks, there's a punch coming to your brother's face. Yeah. Not you half stab, I bleed. Because yeah. <laughs> if you take both halves of the cookie, then you've got a whole cookie. Yeah, yeah. which is far superior to half a cookie. That's true. Yeah, I'm thinking about my siblings tying me up in the backyard as, uh, yeah, I think we had different childhood than you yep, did, yep. Uh, their, their model. It's true. I think, I mean, the, the, with the census thing, like New York is even tougher, right? Yeah. Like losing by 85 people or something, like yeah. there's a really narrow margin for them. But you see the Rust Belt, like really taking hits here. Um, some of that, I think, is about the aging population of the United States, yeah. like like yeah. people moving south and into warmer states and everything. Yeah, a little bit is that. A little bit of losing a lot of manufacturing, so people moving to different areas that have other sort of like moving out to the Dakotas yeah. and Oklahoma for petroleum jobs, uh, that sort of thing, you know. Uh, I'm excited about the, you know, we didn't post about the district, uh, the House voting for the district to become a state. I think that's really exciting. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. I, it'd be so cool. I'd love to just, like, think of all the flags you'd have to replace. Yeah, I know. There's know? a whole industry just in that. And we, 51 is divisible by 7 and and 3? No, 3? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it is obvious that it should be done. Uh, but, yeah. you know, you don't do obvious things when politics are involved. You break the cookie in half and then you eat both halves. And then you stab <laughs> stab the cookie cutter. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a great one about uh, quantifying uh, cat butt touches, which is just adorable. Uh, yeah, I thought this was very cute. Uh, there's a picture yeah. of her poster. Yeah, so, uh, but that, I am a little worried about the research. <laughs> I'm a little worried about uh, the approval process for this <laughs> because I'm afraid that uh, the the lipstick on the butt there probably should have been a little bit of like some panel review uh, of the ethics of that. Uh, and I'm less concerned uh, about the butt of the cat as I am about getting lipstick <laughs> all over my house. At the very least, you want to. I hopefully a glove was involved. <laughs> hopefully, they, hopefully, after applying the lipstick to the cat's butthole, they uh, got rid of the lipstick. I'm worried she just put it back on her mother's like <laughs> kit. You know, 
I can just imagine some grad student being like, I hope it, I hope this doesn't awaken something in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So anyway, that's a charming story. Uh, yeah. I mean, this kid, you know, I, I love this kid. This that's great, great stuff. I don't know anything about the quantum telescope. Was that you, Rob? No, it was Chris. Yeah. That's a very me story. Um, I just yeah. want to make sure we saved it because, you know, Chris Sorry, I, I really meant to share this tab. <laughs> I forgot about it. That's <laughs> look, right. I, I wanted to share this tab. It's just, look at this kid. Yay! She's got a poster. She's got the cat. I lipsticked my cat's butt and got an A. <laughs> and, and, and it's right. funny. She didn't just say butt. She said butthole yeah. like a yeah. hundred times Committed. in this poster. And I'm just like, you know, this kid, I, I couldn't have said butthole in sixth grade without getting my, you know. Getting Your butthole is smacked. <laughs> you know? I also am unaware now. I've never had cats, but I was unaware of you had children. The question: If that, do you think your cat's butthole really touches all the surfaces in your house? All I, mean, that's really hypothesis. I love how her hypothesis is raised here, yep. right? Like, if my cat yep. sits on a surface, then their butthole will also touch said surface. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, their feet when they go into the the kit, kitten litter box, you know, they're uh -huh. basically like. It's, it's like basically poop aerosolized and covering their bodies, right? Um, and, and here's the thing. When you wake up and you see prints of the cat in the butter. Yeah, that's fine. You know, you throw that butter out because it's covered in cat poop at that point. You know, it's... Oh, Mr. Fancy can't eat a little cat poop. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> we, uh, so... I guess that's how Chris's house is different than yours and mine, Cliff. Yep. <laughs> And in yeah, my house, in my oh. house, uh, uh, we keep the cat litter boxes in a bathroom closet, and my wife literally put a door, a cat door, in the side of in the wall, uh, so the cats have to jump in order to get out, and that actually shakes off a fair bit of the litter. The litter stays in the closet. Listen. It's not the first time the cat's gone for the butter. I've thrown out <laughs> two things of butter this week. So you know they're you know. doing amazing things with lid technology these days, Chris. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. Uh, it's true. Uh, Japan had a mascot for the Fukushima wastewater dump. I I love this. Wait, I, what? I couldn't believe that this was real, yeah. but it's totally real. Yep. This is fake. No. 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 Someone there was like, you know, little know Mr. Tritium. Gonna, <laughs> I know we're gonna catch shit for this. Maybe if we make a happy little mascot. This reminds me so much of that Simpsons episode. Yep. <laughs> oh, know. with the slurm? Or, no, the, the no, little... With, with the Mr. Mr. Sparkles? Yeah. Mr. Sparkles, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Sparkles. Did you see the John Oliver uh, episode <gasps> where he uh, has the Japanese mascot? Yes, it's yeah. so That's good. That's great. So, big shock. Uh, people don't like the cute uh, little Mr. Tritium. <laughs> I mean, I know Japan does yeah. cute stuff well, but that is a cute mascot. Like, totally. That's... And all he wants to do is dump radioactive water into the ocean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look how happy he is. Yay! I mean, he's perfectly fine with his transformation and yep. disabilities. Look at him. Yeah. Mr. Sparkle. I'm disrespectful to dirt. There you go. There's, what is it, John? Well, she John or something. She John, yeah. yeah. God, that was cool. Um, okay, uh, there's a couple of short ones, uh, but uh, you should read the story if you haven't about Snowden Duncan on the Get Rich Quick scheme. He got invited. Yeah, that, was, that was okay. But well, was, he got invited by his thing. agent to speak at a thing. He didn't really he research paid. what the thing was, then looked up what the thing was, uh, and so then showed crazy. up and then proceeded to tell the entire audience that the thing was probably BS. So good on him. <laughs> you know this is a scam, right? <laughs> uh, that tickled me tremendously. Uh, but uh, uh, oh, now we got to so save up our monies so we can buy Donald Trump Buddha statues. They're trending. Yep. Got mine on order. They're gonna I, make... I can't think of anyone less Buddha than Donald Trump. That's why it's great. Mm. Like, oh. well, yeah, maybe not anyone real. Make my garden great again. Make it better if it was like a swole Donald Trump Buddha, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So tranquil. 
And are those Polynesian forms in the background, Rob? Yes. I'm beginning to think these people don't respect the cultures that they're <laughs> creating resin statues for. That's in keeping with uh, Trump. Isn't resin just a nice way of saying plastic in this case? Yeah. yeah. Epoxy. Yeah. I'm just glad that that's for sale. Uh, the last thing that I had on the list is just something that I wanted to show you guys, which is uh, the the AIO water cooler. Uh, and it's just a little animated uh, thing. But I just think that this is the coolest thing. Speaking <laughs> of IRB problems. <laughs> it's it's a <laughs> LCD screen, Cliff. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just playing a video. It's not. It's Yeah, it's an animated GIF. Uh, but, uh, that was that, like, I, uh, I don't really need, you know, any more RGB in my computer. I should show you a picture of it. It's I, horrible. I guess that it explains why all the gerbil pellets are piling up inside there. Yep. <laughs> the question is, does that mouse's butt get on all the surfaces of the computer? Yeah. 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 Your 3090 becomes a 3080 after that. Or a 3095. I'm trying to find Trump Buddha shippers. Did you say Trump Buddha shippers, like meaning people who are interested in writing fan fiction about uh, a relationship between Trump and Buddha? Or are you no, trying no, to I, ship I, a I went to AliExpress. I put in Trump and Buddha. And honestly, I'm so disappointed in China at this point. Like, this is where all those Trump signs came from. Oh, yeah. All the Trump train and Trump this mm -hmm. and, you they know. all Trump. ended up in my neighbor's yard. Oh. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, I guess it's great that they, you know, are supporting Chinese labor, but it's good to have, it's good to love something. That's what I think. That's true. The world needs more love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's funny. All these 2020 signs, I'm like, they're getting cheaper by the day. Well, that's because the market has shifted, uh, uh, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, really. It's, it's moved on. Now it's about the 2024 <laughs> market. Uh, to make America even greater. Well, there are some 2024 signs. Here. I know, because uh, when you uh, search search on Etsy for pen blanks, uh, you will find a surprising amount of pen blank uh, that are uh, that are Trump uh, related. And it almost makes me a little sad. <laughs> oh, that's a market. The, the most popular uh, selling pens uh, for the people who sell them commercially are often ones that look like bullets and guns uh, and ones that, that uh, advertise Trump. So, yay. Wait, okay. So, you, you make pens, Rob. It's true. So, I thought pen blanks were the things you, you carve yourself on a lathe. Yes. So, if they already have crap printed on them... So, in not... this... So what this particular gentleman would be doing is he would be essentially wrapping a, probably a sticker around a no. tube and then encasing the whole thing in resin. Uh, okay. And so you get you would get a square that has uh, that has this thing inside it, and then you would turn it down. Uh, it you see you'll see those for uh, for pen making with nice. anything. People they like to put the like a printout of the Second Amendment uh, in them. Uh, the, the constitution, but also like, you know, do you see when yeah, people put little Star Wars logos and stuff inside of pens? You would think that a pen would be more First Amendment aligned, you know? You would think a lot of things, but it turns out that uh, a lot of our irrational like pen religions... being mightier than the sword. Sword, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no. not the gun. Not no. the gun. So. Nope. Anyway, that was uh, the last one, Hannah, unless you wanted to talk about Dan. Yeah, Dan Kamensky, he, he was just a good egg, you know? He uh, he did a lot for computer security, and he was a nice person. I met him back in the old days of, uh, gosh, 2004, 2003, maybe I, before I then. feel like I met him like at ALS or Linux World, but I don't remember. Uh, I, I, yeah, I was having a hard time figuring out the earliest time that I met him, it was probably at Foo Camp in 2004. Mm. Is I, I know we were both there for that. Uh, I know that we were on a plane together or something. I don't know. You know, I was never really a, a black hat DEF CON person, you know, so it's not my thing. But yeah, Dan, I would run into from time to time. And he was just a, he was a nice guy. 
42. diabetic complications. 42, so, man. Yeah. Just stinks. Yep. It's always the good ones, right? Well, the bad ones, too. That's you know, true. I guess inevitably death, it's all of us. Death claims us all, you know? Mm. But um, It was nice to see so many nice things said about the guy on Twitter. Uh, I like that. Uh, I like thinking that uh, when I finally kick the bucket, people will finally get around to saying the nice things about me. <laughs> oh, guys, I just have to start thinking about some nice stuff. I know. You got, you, I mean, the charts say that I got another 20, 30 years, so you got some time. Although I gotta yeah. say, if we're still well, posting so on Twitter you. in 20 or 30 years, we've really failed as a world. Yeah, I wonder, you know, what's going on with Twitter now that, you know, it's sort of had a shoulder of users and, and the rest. But yeah, anyway, good guy. See ya, Dan. You know, you, you did all right. Yep. Leave the world better than you found it, man. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing. If we're still doing this damn podcast in 20 years, it'll probably be like, you know, the obituary of the day, you know, for people, you know, our contemporaries. Yeah. You know. And li a list of medical grievances. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, you know, my shoulder is still hurting, you know. Welcome to the what hurts hour. Does this mole <laughs> look okay to you? <laughs> I don't know. Can you bend over and get a better light up there? Can you put your ring light there? Yeah. <laughs> no, because we'll all be in virtual reality yeah. by then. This yeah, is actually right. a real problem we had in my research community. So the, the field of human computer interaction was founded at a time when now the founders are all starting to get to the age where they're passing yeah. fairly regularly. So we were having a hard time thinking about how to appropriately memorialize people, like who gets a, who gets picked for the in memoriam video and yeah. like, what do you do and stuff like that. So it, it's a real problem, it, it turns out. Yeah, well, and also once you decide like when when you have it, it's a similar thing i think with the with the oscars right they do the in memor memoriam in memoriam reel uh like mm. there's a discrepancy in the fame level of the people uh in those videos and there's obviously politics and everything that that surrounds that but then you have to make an honest decision like what you do for person a do you have to do that for person b and they're not all equal contributors and it's it's a shitty thing to have to think about uh, yeah. I think that that's the sort of thing that you, you can't get it right. Uh, all you can do is get it wrong and get yelled at on Twitter. Because Twitter has no context. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I, I uh, so let's see now. In memoriam. Yeah, because they had some people in sound, documentary, short film, acting, writing, executives. Yep. You know, music, it's just like a lot of these people never heard of them, never heard their. I mean, well, I, okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, I, the person who wrote, I never promised you a rose garden was in the memoriam list this year for the Oscars. And I'm like, that's a good song. Sure. Yeah. All right. I'll, 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 I'll give them that one. All, All right. right. But yeah. All right, folks, let's go about our day. Done. Wait. Oh, you got one more? No, you do, Rob. I mean, because you you care about the Oscars. You watch the darn movies. I skipped you... it this year. That's you how skipped it. I, yeah, I, I did. The wow. whole podcast wasn't about the Oscars. Yeah, yeah right. No, I I, mean... I looked at. I, so I watched thirty eight movies uh, for the Oscars, uh, and I looked at that list and said I didn't feel there's a five star movie in that batch. There's a Whoa. whole lot of four stars, a whole lot of great performances, but I didn't think any of the movies were five stars. I thought Parasite last year was a five star movie, a fantastic masterpiece great. and worthy of praise. I thought that all the movies that were this year, there were a bunch of them. What I, what I was trying to articulate is that there weren't a lot of clunkers uh, this year. A lot of times I find that there, you know, a third of the movies are just garbage and they were, you know, nominated for reasons besides the quality of the film. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't feel that this year. I thought almost all of the movies were completely watchable, three-star, four-star, yeah. good movies. Uh, but I didn't think that anything was great, and I realized I didn't care. So I, instead, I yeah. watched uh, Garbage TV. Yeah, I guess Godzilla vs. Kong came out too late this year, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. But Nomadland is really good, and you should definitely watch Nomadland. But... Yeah, I should see that. I haven't seen it yet. Um, it's great. Yeah, no, I like Parasite. Uh, I started to watch Mortal Kombat. Oh, it was terrible. It was unwatchable. It's bad garbage. The did, fights... did, you, did you watch the old Mortal Kombat movies? 
Uh, I saw the last one. Yeah. The, well, all, the first one with the song, you know? They're all terrible. With Chris. Christopher Lambert? <laughs> Christopher all Lambert. Yep. Was it I actually Julia? thought, like, the first 10 minutes of this Mortal Kombat, I'm like, holy shit, there's a story? I kind of like this. And then, of course, once they start fighting, it all turns into garbage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at least there was a part of this movie that I thought, oh, well, Someone's you trying to tell a story here. You're right. They had aspirations, and in some way, if they hadn't had aspirations and failed those aspirations so mightily, yeah. you know, it would have been well, in some ways better. There you know, are a lot of videos. They, they were just about to touch acceptability as a movie, and then they fell so short of that goal. Of, there are a lot of videos out there that uh, talk about uh, editing action sequences and and stylistic differences and choices that are made. And uh, I felt like the action was really rough. Uh, like they, they do a lot of things where they like cut before the impact or they cut after the impact. There's a lot of weird timing things that just made all the action just seem dumb. Uh, and I mean, if you don't have a story, you at least better have action. And that's what I'd say for Godzilla. Like the story was weak, but goddamn, it was fun watching giant beasts knock down skyscrapers. You you did the thing you were you promised me. <laughs> Anybody else watch the Shadow and Bone series on that? No, is there any good? Mm-hmm. I haven't yet. It's uh, there's some compelling bits to it, right? Like there's like parts of it I really really loved. Um, I feel like the ending kind of, I mean, it's supposed to continue. So like the ending of the thing just didn't really like hit me like I wanted it to, but um, some of the sequences are really fantastic and compelling. What's the genre? It's kind of like uh, it's... alternate history, magic, mm. sci fantasy kind of oh, thing. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's basically sort of the hunger games put in the fantasy realm instead of sci-fi. Yeah. Oh, it's got I haven't guy. read the books that it's based off of, but I checked out the series and the season finale of For All Mankind was last Friday, and it was really. I good. heard it was very good. It was really good, yeah. uh, but I like that show a lot, and it's it ticks all my boxes. It's got the guy from Suicide Squad who can't carry a movie. That's that's cool. Uh, it's got the big, the big guy you hate. I don't hate him. I actually think he's quite charming, as I've said many, many times. I just think he's cursed. Right. You hate him. <laughs> no. Wait, I, which guy is this? Uh, Joel, what's his face? Yeah. the Yeah. Joel Kinnaman. Is that what it is? Kinnaman. Yeah. Uh, I, the, my only problem with him is that man is like, he looks like he's like six foot five and weighs 280 pounds of raw muscle. And there was oh, no, no way. He's a great that, looking guy. There's no way that he would have been in a, a Gemini or Mercury era astronaut. Those dudes were all like five, eight and weighed 160 pounds. Yeah. And so he's playing Gordon Gordo. Gordon is Gordo. six feet two. So that's on the top end. Of what's allowed was it five ten or six six two? I think. Well, I mean, one? if you look at the the heights and weights of the Mercury and Gemini astronauts, they were all you know in the five six, five eight, five ten range, and they were all like one hundred and forty to one hundred and sixty, one hundred eighty pounds. Uh, and that man is a giant Hulk, and he's playing, uh, I think, Ed White. Yeah, uh, because of the small space inside of the Mer- Mercury spacecraft, candidates could be no taller than five feet eleven inches and weigh no more than one hundred eighty pounds. So, there you so go. that's two of him. <laughs> <laughs> six foot two that's he's a baby <laughs> yeah all right gentlemen i'm gonna press the goodbye button <laughs> thank you for coming cliff yeah. it was a pleasure to be here cliff lampy rob roseboom see ya chris Debona. bye and i'm rob commander taco malda we will see you tomorrow we're watching revenge of the nerds <laughs>